Hello everyone this is part 2 of what if Naruto was abused and trained by Madara Uchiha, and I hope you guys enjoy this video and to like, to subscribe, to see more comment down below what he had been told. He had a mother. He did not just fall from the sky. He was both happy and sad, he now knew a little of his mother. She was a Jinchiriku of the QB. He had taken up her burden. A part of him always knew that his parents were not alive. His mother died the day he was born, the day the QB went on a rampage. Kushina Uzumaki, that was his mother's name. A hole in his heart seemed to close slightly, but it could never be completely closed as it lacked a mother's love. Naruto smiled sadly before looking back at Madara. He wanted to thank the old man for telling him something that the Sandime had failed to. It was of great importance to him to know a little about his parents. His voice betrayed him, not a single word came out from his mouth. Madara continued, your father was Minato Namikas, the Yondime Hokage. That fool and your mother died sealing the QB inside of you. Madara said. Naruto's blood began to boil furious, his body was heating, and it began to sweat. Clear anger flashed in his eyes. Madara seemed to like seeing Naruto boil in anger. Before his body could start releasing steam due to the heat on his body, Naruto calmed himself down. The bastard who cursed him was his father. He could not understand how any father would do that to his own child. Minato chose the village over his own son. The thought made him hate the man to a higher level. If he had the power, he would go to the Hokage's monument and destroy that man's face. The anger he felt was enough to make him draw out the QB's chakra unconsciously, but it receded once he calmed down. He was glad for whoever gave him his mother's name. He hated Namikas, and everything that has to do with him. He hated the fact that the man's blood was inside of his body. If the Namika's blood could be drained from his body he would have it drained. You look a lot like him, have you noticed? The horrors continued for Naruto, he did look like a younger version of the bastard. He had the same blonde hair and blue eyes as the bastard. He could see pictures of the Yondime smiling at him, you might hate me but you still my son and you look a lot like me. He banished the thoughts quickly before he could do something he would later regret. Minato was a fool to think that the village would accept you as a hero. Naruto nodded it was a foolish thought by the, great, Yondime Hokage, how come no one has ever spoken of my mother's name, there is nowhere in history books that says she was a Jinchiriku. All records about her were destroyed, and her Jinchiriku status was kept a secret only a select few in high positions knew of it. His mother was made none exist because of foolish beliefs. They celebrated the Yondime as a hero while his mother was not spoken, she died and no one ever speaks of it. Her name was not even written in the history books, he blamed the Yondime for that. It was the same as him, he who carried the burden was hated, while the Yondime who ran off to die was worshipped. He hated the bastard, if he was still alive, he would give nothing more than to see the man die a slow painful death, while he watches. Naruto shook his head banishing the evil thoughts that were on his mind. Thinking such things was not going to do anything good for him. It would just destroy him from the inside. He looked at Madara, how come you know all of this, I'm sure none of the villagers know of it, if they did they wouldn't dare hate the only child of the beloved Yondime, he said the last part bitterly. I know of this because I was Kushina's father, your grandfather. That is why I have been helping you for the past moths. Naruto's eyes widened, the fact that the man called himself Uchiha Madara was long forgotten, what was important was that the old man has just said he was his grandfather. A part of him always knew that the old man was connected with him. A few tears dropped from his eyes, he had promised himself that he would never cry again, but he could make an exception just for this time. He was happy, he had a grandfather. Naruto smiled a true happy smile that Madara had never seen from the boy. A thought popped out of Naruto's head, if you are truly my grandfather, how come you were never there for me in the past years? Madara sighed, I had never returned to the village ever since I defected, and by the time you were born I could no longer walk, it is through all kinds of experiments that I was able to get myself to be mobile again, though not forever. Somehow I believe that you are my grandfather but I don't believe that you could be Uchiha Madara. Madara nodded, given it time, and you will believe me. I don't doubt that you are an Uchiha because of your eyes. But I don't get it you are Uchiha, if you are my grandfather, shouldn't that have made mother an Uchiha? It did, but your grandmother and I part ways when she was still caring your mother. Your grandmother was an Uzumaki, a seal master. 
When Kushina was born she placed a seal on her that somehow made it impossible for Kushina's Uchiha blood to be dominant. Madara explained bitterly, he hated that woman for doing what she did, even though he had no use for a girl. Naruto nodded, anything was possible with the art of sealing. A giant fur ball was sealed inside of him because of the art. So he would be foolish not to believe that something like that could be done. What he had been told had drained him of his energy, it was enough for his young mind, this is a bit too much for me. I think I need to get some rest. Madara nodded, I will come back in a few days, we have much to discuss, he said taking his leave. Naruto went away to his bed to get some rest. It would help clear his mind. What he had learned today was too much for him, tomorrow he was not even going to the academy he needed to deal with the information he had been told first. The Sandime had hid too much information from him. He was not going to confront the old man about it, no everything would continue just as it had been that was for certain. But other things were surely going to change. He had a grandfather, a family who cared for him. That was enough to change everything. Another certain thing was that he did not have a father and never had a father. As far as he was concerned Minato Namikas was not his father, he forfeited that right when he cursed him and died a hero while he was condemned to live a cursed life. Naruto sighed as he jumped into his small bed. He did not even bother to take off his jumpsuit, rest was more important than undressing. A few days later Madara was staring at Naruto with an impassive gaze. He had returned to see Naruto and discuss a few things with the boy. There was no need for him to be smiling he had already told the boy everything. It was why he was not smiling at the moment. Have you cleared your thoughts? Naruto nodded, yes, grandfather. He replied with a smile. He had come to accept that the old was his grandfather. Madara's face remained impassive, good, now then you and I have a lot to discuss, but not here. Madara said taking Naruto's hand. Both disappeared into thin air. Naruto found himself in a dark place. Follow me, Madara said walking away from Naruto. Naruto followed his grandfather into the darkness. They appeared in what appeared to be a kitchen, both took their sits. What is this place? This is my hideout. I have been hiding out in here for years now. Are we out of Kanoa? Yes, now enough of those questions. I am happy that you have believed that I am truly your grandfather. For a Jinchuriku especially the Kyubis you are bound to face tough challenges ahead. Your life will always be in danger of being taken. Once other villagers know that you are a Jinchuriku of the Kyubi they might try to kidnap you for the power of the Kyubi. It is my duty to ensure that when the challenges do come you can protect yourself. That is why from now on as your grandfather I will make sure that you are trained. I will be your sensei. Do you have a problem with that? Although the question was asked, the tone in which the question was asked gave Naruto the thought that he really did not have a choice. So he shook his head. Good, I only have a few years before this body gives up, I have lived too long. In these few years I must train you and make sure that I, build, your body to be a powerful body, he paused for a moment, Naruto, you will have to live two lives from now on. What I show you here can never be revealed to anyone until I say so is that clear. Naruto nodded, I will cast a genjutsu on you, to make hide the changes that will occur to your body once you begin training. When do we begin training? Now, what? Listen boy, I don't have much time, I allowed you to enjoy your childhood for the past months, but from now on you will no longer be pampered like a child. Your childhood is over. Naruto looked at his grandfather with wide eyes. The man was taking over his life. Madara sighed looking at Naruto, fine we will begin your training in a week, for now I will show you around the hideout so that you can become familiar with it. Gigi, what about the academy and Kanoa? You will be at Kanoa. We will just have to find a way for you to be at two places at once as time goes on. Madara showed Naruto around the large hideout. But he did not show Naruto everything. He only showed him the rooms and training ground he would use when he is in the hideout. There was another time for the boy to see everything within the hideout. Naruto had to know everything he needed to know before he saw everything in the hideout. Now was not the right time to tell Naruto everything. After he had done that he took Naruto back to Kanoa. He would go fetch the blonde in a week to begin the training he needed to give the boy. Naruto was excited, although a bit sad that his grandfather was too demanding. He was just happy that he was going to get real training done. Soon he would be able to defend himself. He was also sad that his grandfather did not have much time. 
but a few years was enough, at least he would have known his grandfather. His grandfather spoke of his death like he was going to die soon. Academy Naruto walked into the class with his usual grin planted on his face. He had been early for the class today because he had missed classes the previous two days. He went on to take a sit next to a sleeping boy, with black hair. Shikamaru, Naruto called out waking up the sleeping boy. He had been able to find a few people he could talk with and play with whenever he was at the academy. They were like his friends. Nara Shikamaru, the Nara clan heir, was smart, too smart for his own good. He had been the first person to talk to Naruto kindly. Shikamaru, despite being a genius like any Nara, he was lazy. The boy spent his time sleeping or looking at the clouds. He seemed to be always bored, like there is nothing that can interest him. Shikamaru was understanding and different from other kids. He knew that Naruto was hated, through observation. It was why he had invited Naruto to play with him and his friends. Despite knowing that Naruto was hated, Shikamaru did not why. His brains had been unable to find an answer. Shikamaru had a friend who was also a clan heir, Choji Akamaiki. Choji was just as kind as Shikamaru, though he did not possess a great mind as his best friend. Like all Akamaiki, Choji was always eating chips at the academy. Nothing other than food excited the boy. He would even go as far as to drool if someone spoke of barbecued meat. Naruto met the boy when Shikamaru had asked him to come and play with him. Choji and Shikamaru were the only two Naruto would consider friends. He spent his breaks with them. Both avoided trouble at all cost, Shikamaru found it too troublesome to get involved in a hustle. The two were not the only people who did not treat Naruto with hatred. He also knew Kiba Inazuka, the loud, brash heir of the Inazuka clan. Kiba always liked to be seen as the dominant alpha. Naruto guessed it was just the Inazuka blood acting up. It was as if Kiba felt he needed to make his position as alpha known, whenever he felt threatened. Kiba was always with his puppy, Akamaru. They were always together, Kiba would freak out should Akamaru go missing for a minute. It was a custom that any Inazuka have a dog as a partner, as their fighting style involved working with their partners, which were the dogs. Shino Abarem, the Abarem clan heir. Naruto did not understand the boy at all. Shino was always quiet and never showed any emotion. He was smart but not like Shikamaru. Im, the troublesome blonde, do you have to do you have to wake me up every time you find me sleeping? Shikamaru grunted shifting his head. Naruto grinned, did your mother wake you up too early again? If there was something that Shikamaru found more troublesome than anything, it was his mother, and he also feared her more than anything. His mother did not like his lazy attitude. It was why she had taken it upon herself to wake Shikamaru each morning. If she did not do something like that Shikamaru would avoid coming to the academy as he found it boring and troublesome, or he would be late to class every day. Yes, that troublesome woman never lets me sleep peacefully, where have you been in the past days? A. Home, did not feel like attending the previous days. Naruto replied with a shrug. Man I wish I was you. Shikamaru said going back to sleep making Naruto shake his head. Naruto felt a pair of eyes staring at him. He turned around to see the person who had been staring at him. The Huga heiress looked away quickly upon seeing that she'd been caught staring. Huga Hanata, Naruto thought looking at the Huga heiress. He found the girl weird. She acted oddly around him. What Naruto had been able to understand about the girl was that she was very shy and lacked self-confidence. Her behavior was amusing to say the least. It was also unheard of, for a Huga to lack self-confidence especially a heiress of the clan. Huga were much more disciplined and self-controlled, taught a superiority complex at a young age. It made Naruto wonder what might have happened to make the girl lose her self-confidence. That side of the girl, a side that lacked confidence, Naruto saw it as pathetic. The world had no place for people who did not believe in themselves, once you failed to believe in yourself, you were hopeless. You can never hope to achieve anything if you lacked self-confidence. But despite her lack of self-confidence Naruto did notice that she was kind-hearted. Naruto's eyes were taken off the girl as the doors burst open revealing Sasuke Uchiha, the top student of the class. Naruto did not like the Uchiha's attitude, it was why he never spent a second wasting his thoughts on the boy. The Uchiha looked out of breath. Fan girls, Naruto thought. The Uchiha was popular in the female department. He was usually being chased around the academy by his fan girls. 
Sasuke did not seem to like girls. In fact he tried by all means to avoid them. When he could not avoid them, he ignored them when they tried to speak to him. Some of the boys in the class wished they had the young Uchiha's luck when it came to girls. Girls threw themselves at the Uchiha, while they had to try hard to get a girl to talk with them. Kiba resented Sasuke for that fact. He even went on as far as to try to embarrass Sasuke to get the girls to like him and leave Sasuke. The result, Kiba ended up in a hospital bed, not because he got beat up by Sasuke, no it was rather the fangirls that pummeled the boy. From that day till now, Kiba has learned to hate Sasuke. The doors burst open again, two girls rushed into the class, one was wearing a pink dress, she had pink hair, and green eyes. This girl's name was Haruno Sakura, the president of the Uchiha fan club. On her right was a blonde-haired girl same height as Sakura. The girl's name was Ino Yamanaka, heir of the Yamanaka clan. She was the vice president of the Uchiha fan club. Both girls were huge admirers of Sasuke. They were best friends and rivals when it came to fighting for Sasuke's attention and affection. None of the girls have had any luck so far, but their failure on encouraged them to do more. Sakura was way too loud for Naruto's liking. He has clashed with her a few times. Sasuke knew that Naruto was not the most liked in the class, thus he often chose to sit next to Naruto to drive away the fan girls. His choice drove away most of the fan girls but not Sakura. She would yell at Naruto to get him to go sit somewhere else so she could sit next to her, Sasuke-kun. Naruto obviously refused to do so each time, but his refusal would only get him smacked in the face by the girl. Despite her being weak, her punches really hurt. The class began to fill and the mutterings began. Naruto thought of taking a nap but decided against it seeing that Aruka would show up in class at any time soon. A minute later the Chunin teacher walked inside the class with a stack of paper. The class quieted down, as the students did not want to fall victim of Aruka's wrath. Aruka smiled at his students, good morning my students, I hope you are prepared for test. Naruto looked at Shikamaru with shock written all over his face, hey Shikamaru, why did not you tell that there was a test today? It was too troublesome, Shikamaru said with a yawn. Naruto said nothing, he did not care about passing the test, he still had a few years in the academy to make up for lost time should it be necessary. He was the demon and an idiot, an idiot he would give them, for anyway. They were given 30 minutes to complete the test. The test was not that hard, it was just a history test. There was nothing that Naruto did not know, but to be an idiot that people wanted to see, he answered the questions that even someone with half brains would answer. The only questions he answered were the ones where they asked the names of Hokages. After the test, Aruka gave them a lecture before letting them go home. Naruto walked beside Choji and Shikamaru as they made their way out of the academy grounds. Naruto, Shikamaru and I are going to get some barbecued pork. You can come with us if you want to. Choji said rubbing his stomach. Naruto shook his head, sorry Choji, I will pass today. Man, I had thought we would do another eating contest, well that just means more food for me. Naruto chuckled, I will see you guys tomorrow. He said increasing his pace. Come on Shikamaru let's get going before your mother comes looking for you. Shikamaru said nothing, he just followed Choji. If his mother was to find him at this time she would have him do hard work he would rather avoid. A few days later the Uchiha massacre, one of the greatest tragedies to have ever occurred in Kanoa, beside the Kyubi's rampage. The whole Uchiha clan was massacred by Uchiha Itachi, only leaving his little brother Uchiha Sasuke alive. One man massacred an entire clan in a single night. The Uchiha clan was supposed to be the strongest clan in Kanoa since the great rivals, the Senju had now gone extinct, and only one person was alive from the great Senju clan. Uchiha Itachi, he was said to be a prodigy, the strongest Uchiha alive. Naruto wondered what kind of power Itachi must have possessed to be able to massacre an entire clan in one night. He had to be surely powerful to pull off something like that. The reason the Uchiha had killed his clan was that he wanted to test his power. It was a reason that would make everyone to think that he had lost it, power had corrupted him. From what Naruto had been hearing about Itachi was that Itachi had been a kind and peaceful person before he became an Anbu. After he had become an Anbu, he became cold and distant. A change that not many liked, but he still did his job as a shinobi with all his heart. What was certain from those who knew him was that Itachi loved Kanoa. 
that was being questioned by everyone, who loved a village and still massacres the village's strongest clan, his own family. The Uchiha fled the village after he had massacred his own clan and was now labeled an S-rank missing nin. Only a select few had been able to reach that level of being ranked S-rank. S-rank level shinobi could fight against a cage, but not all could defeat a cage. Still for Itachi to reach the level of S-rank still being a team was something worth applauding. Not many people could achieve the kind of feat that Uchiha Itachi had achieved. Kanoa was in chaos. The great clan had been massacred. Some clans increased security in their compounds to ensure that the tragedy that fell on the Uchiha did not to hit them. No one knew if another clan prodigy would massacre his clan just to test his strength. Itachi had done it, who knew another prodigy would not follow his path. Naruto did not feel sad for that a clan he was part of was massacred. He did not care about what happened to them. He just pitied Sasuke, knowing that the young Uchiha would be crushed. Having your own brother kill your parents and your clan was something that one could not just shrug off as if it was nothing. Naruto sighed as he walked inside his grandfather's hideout. His grandfather was beside him. They arrived at a large clearing. The place Madara had told Naruto would be his training ground. Grandfather, do you know of the Uchiha clan massacre? Madara nodded, yes, those traitors got what they deserved. Naruto looked at his grandfather curiously. He had come to accept his grandfather was indeed Uchiha Madara, the former Uchiha clan leader and co-founder of Konohagaku. He thought the man would be a little sad that a clan he once led was massacred. Why do you call them traitors? When I founded Kanoa with that other man, Kanoa selected him as first Hokage instead of me. I told my clan that the Senju would oppress us and seek to control us. But those fools refused to believe me and supported Hashirama. They said I had lost it. Over the past years the Uchiha were stripped of their power in Kanoa, and reduced to mere police force with no real power. Madara said looking at Naruto. Naruto could see that his grandfather was truly happy that the Uchiha clan had been massacred. Another thing he noticed was that his grandfather held a great deal of animosity towards Hashirama. But he still respected the man for his power. How powerful do you think Uchiha Itachi was, to be able to massacre his own clan? He is strong for a shinobi of this generation, but he is nowhere strong as I was in my prime, Madara paused for a moment, do you really believe that Itachi massacred the Uchiha clan because he wanted to test his power? Naruto nodded, Madara shook his head, they were killed because of ignorance. They had come to realize that Kanoa leaders were pushing them away from the village they founded. They had lost any power they had and could no longer influence the village in any way. They had also lost trust in the eyes of many Kanoa villagers because they were blamed for the Kyubi rampage as some believed that the Kyubi was being controlled by a Sharingan. Had they listened to me nothing like this would have happened. I still don't understand how that got them killed. They were attempting a coup d'etat to take over the village. It was the only way they could get their power back. Something like that would have led to a civil war, other villages like Kumo and Iwa would have taken the opportunity to attack Kanoa. Madara explained seeing it no point in leaving Naruto out in the dark about the truth. Naruto had wide eyes at the implications of what his grandfather was saying, so Itachi killed his clan to avoid a civil war. Madara nodded, you catch on fast, how do you know this Gigi? You spend your time here and the massacre only occurred four days ago. Madara smiled placing his hand on top of Naruto's head. I know everything that happens in Kanoa, nothing can be hidden from me, I am a co-founder of the village, when the village was built I was there, he paused retrieving his hand, now shall we begin our training. Yes, I think I will stay here for a few days since academy has been closed for three weeks. Naruto said. Madara nodded, he already knew that, before we begin your training I want you to meet someone. Zetsu appeared from the ground, Naruto this is Zetsu, he already knows you. Naruto waved his head his hand at Zetsu and then looked at Madara, what is he? Madara chuckled slightly, he is my spy, my creation. Naruto only understood spy, he did not understand what Madara meant by creation. It was not possible for someone to create life, right? You can go, Zetsu, Zetsu sank back to the ground. Madara turned to Naruto, we will begin your training in physical training. I need you to have a strong body. For the next year you will not go back to Kanoa but you will be in training each day, after you awaken your Sharingan we can then focus on ninjutsu. Won't the Sandime start looking for me if I go missing for that long? 
Don't worry I will help you create a blood clone that will replace you in Kanoa for the next year. The clone will last for a year, it will be a replica of you, no one will tell the difference. Naruto nodded and smiled brightly, now let's begin with the training. He yelled struggling to contain his excitement. Madara grinned. It was a grin that made Naruto to think twice about allowing his grandfather to train him. The grin Madara had promised pain, a painful training that Naruto would soon have to endure. Madara did not stop grinning as he was busy picturing the torture he was going to put Naruto through. Hey grandfather, are you okay? Madara stopped grinning, yeah I am okay, put this weights on. Naruto put on the weights on his legs, but found it nearly impossible to move. He looked at his grandfather thinking that he would let him half the weight, but his grandfather shook his head, do 50 laps, after that 50 sit-ups, 100 punches and kicks on that dummy. I will be watching your progress from here. Naruto stood unmoving for a minute. His grandfather hit him in the head with his cane telling him to begin his training. Naruto dragged his body and began his training, which he believed was a little harsh for a seven-year-old. At the end of the day Naruto had lost consciousness. Zetsu had to carry him off to his room within the huge hideout. When he woke up he cursed his grandfather. Madara was quick to point out that with Naruto's healing abilities because he housed the QB any damaged muscles would be healed while he was sleeping. It would be foolish not to take that advantage. Madara said. Though Naruto could agree it would be foolish not to take advantage of his healing abilities, it did not mean he had to like the kind of training his grandfather was putting him through. Don't worry it only hurts this much because it was your first day. Once you get used to the weights, and your body adapts to the training program, you won't be complaining anymore. Madara said. Naruto just nodded he needed to rest. The old man had told him when he woke up they would have to begin the training in the morning, only taking breaks to let him recover. Six months later Madara had just finished telling Naruto about the Sage of Six Paths. He needed to start at the beginning for Naruto to understand why he was going to do, things, to his body. Naruto listened well when his grandfather was telling him about the sage and his legendary eyes the Rinnegan. The eyes that gave the sage the ability to learn any jutsu in existence, control over life and death. Something like that really made the man a god, you had to be god to have control over life and death, to be able to bring the dead back to life. The sage had two children, Senju and Uchiha. The Senju posses the sage's physical power and life force while Uchiha possessed the sage's eyes. In my fight with Hashirama I was able to get his cells and infuse them in my body. As I told you the sage was made out of Uchiha and Senju. I experimented on myself trying to achieve the power of the sage. With Hashirama's cells I was able to get his power, the ability to do Mokuten Jutsu. At my old age, I was able to unlock the Rinnegan because I had both Uchiha and Senju powers. Naruto looked at his grandfather's eyes, Madara spoke, I transplanted him to a Uzumaki orphan. Why did you do that? He could not understand why someone would give away a powerful dujutsu like the Rinnegan. I will tell you about it later, right now we have other things to deal with. Naruto nodded, so the reason you have Hashirama's face in your chest is because you infused his cells into yourself. Madara nodded, Naruto, I want to infuse my cells and Hashirama's cells. I might hate that man, but I respect him for his power. I know Mokuten is powerful, which is why I want you to be able to use it so that you may be able to stand against your future enemies. Having Senju cells will allow you to awaken the Rinnegan once the cells bond with yours. Naruto was quiet for a few minutes. Whether he liked it or not his grandfather seemed set on to do what he wanted to do on his body. Grandfather, will I also have Hashirama's face on my chest, I already look like Namika's, and to have Hashirama's face on my body will be too much for me. Madara had been teaching Naruto to hate Senju, especially Hashirama. So to Naruto, looking like his father who he hated was already punishment enough. Having Hashirama's face on his chest would be too much for him to bear, since his grandfather he made him hate the man. You won't have Hashirama's face on your chest. What I am going to be doing is to infuse both my and Hashirama's cells with your body. Once the cells bond with your body, they will be part of your own body. You will no longer have Hashirama's Mokuten and Senju cells, but you will have your own Mokuten cells. Your body will produce both Senju and Uchiha blood once I'm with your body. If it is done like me, Hashirama's cells will overcome you, killing you when your body is weak and you don't have the chakra to suppress them. 
At your age, they came overcome you at any moment. Okay, and your cells. I already have Uchiha blood. Madara shrugged, I want you to have my power too. I was just as powerful as Hashirama. It is only fair that you also have my cells. Naruto shook his head his grandfather was too proud of his own power. Fine let's do this I need to go back to training. Naruto said. He had come to enjoy his training, once he had gotten used to the weights his grandfather made him wear. He felt strong physically. Despite not training in ninjutsu he enjoyed his training. He was building power and speed, also making his body tough so it could endure long fights without tiring too easily. One may have an arsenal of jutsus but if you are slow and are fighting against a fast enemy your jutsu become useless because you would not be able to do hand seals as the enemy will get you before you even think of a jutsu you want to use. Madara nodded and motioned for Naruto to lie down. He grinned as he put Naruto into sleep. He was building up a powerful body. He only wished he was still young to see the kind of power the boy would have at his disposal. The boy could have proved to be an interesting opponent that would push him to his limits, only Hashirama had been able to do it. There was no other shinobi that made him seriously other than Hashirama. Two years later a ten-year-old Naruto was watching over Kanoa from the Hokage Monument. Both his eyes showed a fully matured Sharingan. After his grandfather had finished working on his body, he had Zetsu take him out of the hideout. He was taken to a bandit camp and Zetsu disappeared leaving him in front of a camp of 25 overgrown men. They not pleased seeing Naruto in their camp and were not just going to let him go away. Stepping inside their camp meant he had seen things that they prefer that they not be seen by other people. If Naruto was to run off and tell people of what he had seen it would prove troubling for them. The village nearby was surely going to hire Shinobi to get rid of them, Shinobi were not people they liked to deal with. Naruto knew that he was going to have to fight with the bandits. He had been itching for a battle after all. He needed to test how far he had gone with his training. And so he fought with his enemies. They were weak, not strong as shinobi but their numbers proved too much for Naruto. He was almost killed, but his experience of almost getting killed awakened his Sharingan. Zetsu came and finished off the remaining bandits. He took a guilt-stricken Naruto back to the hideout. Naruto felt horrible for killing, to take someone's life had left him feeling like a monster. Especially after knowing that he had just killed just so he could awaken his Sharingan. He was happy that he had awakened his Sharingan but the way it was awakened was not a way he liked. It took a beat down by Madara's cane for Naruto to stop feeling guilty. The experience of killing and Madara's influence left Naruto with little emotions to display. Over the past two years he had worked in ninjutsu and maturing his Sharingan. He trained mostly alone since his grandfather was old and not as mobile as a sensei should be. He only gave Naruto instructions and advised whenever Naruto was having troubles with something. The thing he hated about his grandfather was that he was a perfectionist. Every little mistake that Naruto made was pointed out. He was never satisfied with good, only perfect made him smile. Hashirama's cells were hard to control, his grandfather had told him be patient. The cells were just too hard to control since they had yet to completely bond with his body. Madara had suggested he keep training physically and give time for the cells to bond other than forcing the issue. Naruto listened but worked on fire jutsu. His grandfather was a master of the fire element. With his cells in his body, it also gave him higher control over the fire element. Soon he would be a master of the fire element, with enough training. After he had awakened the Sharingan he had decided against coming back to the village, so that he may focus on maturing his Sharingan and learning ninjutsu. He let the blood clone continue to be in his place at the village. His grandfather had told him to be careful that no one saw him with his Sharingan activated. Madara had said that because Naruto had his Sharingan activated, always. His secrets meant that he could not train within the village. Training within the village would be risking him getting caught doing things he shouldn't be doing. He had returned today, Madara had told him to go back to the village for some time. Zetsu would be used if Madara wanted to see him. The old man's body was giving up. He had told Naruto to go back to Kanoa while he dealt with the problem. Naruto just hoped that the problem would be dealt with, he did not know how he would react should his grandfather's body give up. Naruto was busy sorting out the memories of the clone he had dispelled. The blood clone gave him all the memories it attained on its two and a half life. The memories were too many. Naruto had been sitting in a meditative position for the past five hours. 
a major headache was troubling him due to the overload of memories he received. Nothing much had changed in Kanoa. The Sandime still visited him at his apartment once a month. The villagers had been treating Sasuke like a king because he was the last faithful Uchiha. But the Uchiha seemed not to care how they treated him, he just avoided everyone. Looking at the memories Naruto shook his head at what Sasuke had become because of his brother's actions. Naruto thought for a moment, Sasuke had always been the way he was at the moment, it was just that before the massacre he was not cold and an emo brooding king. But he was distant and seemed to have something dark hidden within his heart. Naruto wondered what the Uchiha would do should he know why his brother massacred their clan. The Uchiha massacre had left the boy unstable. He seemed to lose control over all his emotions when someone mentioned Itachi. Itachi had become a taboo in the presence of Sasuke. The village hated Itachi. They did not know the sacrifice he made. Itachi was like him in some sense. Both were hated even though they were heroes. But it was different with Itachi, since nobody knew he was a hero. With him they refused accepting him as a hero even when he protects the village each day by housing the Kyubi. Due to Madara's influence Naruto had also come to thank Itachi for the Uchiha clan massacre. They had betrayed his grandfather, had they not done that they would never have been wiped out by a single man, no a team with a Mangeki Sharingan. Their arrogance was another that got them killed, they might have been powerful to think that they could take on a village had been a foolish thought on their part. The Mangeku Sharingan was a powerful tool. Dangerous wielded by a demented person. Madara had told Naruto all of the Mangekyo's abilities. Thus Naruto respected anyone who had awakened the eyes. Naruto sighed as he got up and deactivated his Sharingan. He decided to walk back to his apartment. He needed to kill time it was still in the afternoon. He had nothing better to do for the rest of the day. It seems they still haven't changed. Naruto thought walking in the streets of Kanoa. The villagers still had their hateful glares, while some ignored his presence. His clone did not do walk around the village much often, it spent most of its time at the academy and in his apartment. With the time he spent getting lectures from his grandfather, Naruto could care less if they stared at him or not. It longer hurt him, in fact it amused. They were ignorant fools blinded by hatred. He would be a fool too if he cared for what ignorant fools say and do with their time. It was better to let the fools amuse themselves. For now, sooner or later he would be the one laughing openly at them. For now he could not tell them they were fools, if he did they would surely rally up everyone to try to burn and skin him alive for insulting them. Naruto walked past a lake, he stopped when he saw Sasuke sitting there alone. Sasuke noticed Naruto and stared at him with cold uncaring eyes before looking away from the blonde. Naruto shrugged Sasuke's cold stare and continued walking at the direction of his apartment. Sasuke chose to be distant from other people, no one chose for him. He chose to take the path of revenge. Revenge was never a pretty thing. It destroys you from the inside out, until there is nothing left. What would be left would be a body that used to be a person, a shadow and memories that would soon be forgotten. Naruto walked inside of his apartment. He breathed in the air inside of his apartment. He had missed his cold and lonely home. It has not been home to him for the past two years. Naruto smiled at himself and went to his small bedroom. He took off his jumpsuit and jumped into bed. It might have been too early for him to sleep but he had nothing to do. Kanoa was not like his grandfather's hideout where he could do so many things without getting bored. His mind seemed to agree with him. It did not take long for him to drift into unconsciousness bliss. A few days later the forest of death, today Naruto had been strolling around the training ground. He was bored and decided to take a walk within the forest. Only a select few used the training ground, it was a good place for one to be alone. He could not walk around the streets of Kanoa because there was always a pair of Byakugan eyes watching him. It made him feel uncomfortable, to think that a girl, not just any girl, a Hyuga heiress was stalking him. Ever since he returned he had noticed that most of the times the girl was following him around the village. The girl was weird indeed. Naruto came to a conclusion that his clone had been unable to sense her, because it was a copy of the untrained him. Now he sensed Chakra better. The girl was just not good at hiding her position. He had been able to know she was following him rather easily. He climbed on top of a tree and sat on a branch. He still had a lot to do with his training. He was wasting time sitting around doing nothing. 
The academy had nothing to give him, but in order for him to be a ninja he had to attend and pass. Setsu's head formed beside him. It was only the white part that appeared. Setsu had two personalities, Madara called them Black Setsu and White Setsu. Setsu was originally all white, but his grandfather had planted his nature and memories on him. But it resulted in creating Black Setsu, which was smart, serious and strong. Black Setsu became Madara's will. It could do Mokuten Jutsu as Setsu had been created from Hashirama's cells. White Setsu was weak, often playful and never was serious. It hated being reminded that it was weak. The beings could separate from one another. They could function without the other half. Naruto looked at White Setsu. If he came here alone it must mean Black Setsu was somewhere else. Setsu smiled at Naruto, you look bored, his voice was not deep as Black Setsu's. Naruto nodded, there is nothing to do here other than going to the Dam Academy. He paused for a moment, what brings you here? Your grandfather wants to see. Do you know why? Naruto asked. He hoped that the old man was okay. If I told you, then you wouldn't have to go back to the hideout and see your grandfather. I guess you're right. Naruto said. He made a wood clone to replace him while he went away. A wood clone was strong, but did not transfer back its memories to the original. Naruto did not want another headache. A wood clone had been something his grandfather had taught him, it was the only Mokuten Jutsu he could do. You stay here for now, return to the apartment later on, don't miss a day of the academy, and never forget to keep your cover persona. Naruto said disappearing in a swirl of leaves. The only way he could go to the hideout without his grandfather was use the teleportation seal in his apartment, which could only be activated by his blood and chakra. Setsu sank back to the tree branch unknown location. Naruto looked at his grandfather's face. He looked a lot more serious than he had ever seen him before. But he was happy that seemed fine, it seemed that he had solved his problems. He sighed in relief. Naruto, I'm going to tell you some important things, and I need you to listen carefully. Naruto nodded, do you remember the room, I told you had tablets that contained valuable information on them that only in Uchiha and those with the Rinnegan could read. Naruto nodded, the information that is in there is the history of the Rikidu Senen, Chakra and the Bijuus. After we are done here I want you to spend as much time you like making sure that the information in those tablets is in your head. Naruto could only nod, his grandfather never asked him to do something unless it was important. In my years of being a shinobi I came to hate the shinobi system. I devised a plan that would allow me to rule the world, to be god. But by the time I had all the necessary tools to do that plan I was already old, and could no longer carry out that plan. During the Third Ninja World War, I found a young Uchiha boy, his name was Uchiha Obito. He was nearly dead when I found him. His right side of the body was crushed. I took the boy and brought him back to the hideout, and fixed up his body. I did that using Hashirama's cells. When he had recovered he chose to return back to Kanoa. I allowed him to go, but he returned shortly afterwards to stay with me. I told him of my plan. He liked the plan and agreed to take part in it. I used a very powerful genjutsu on him to tell him the knowledge I had, that would help him with the plan. I knew that I was going to die soon and I needed to give him what he needed to be successful in the plan. I trained him as best as I could so that he could be strong and told him to use my name once I had died. But he betrayed me to rule the world himself, and he is out there gathering the strongest shinobi to see that the plan succeeds. He uses my name to recruit the strongest shinobi. He uses the name Uchiha Madara to those he wants to recruit and Toby while doing other things. Naruto absorbed all the information his grandfather gave him. He was a little mad that someone would betray his grandfather. What was this plan grandfather, how did you plan to rule the world? Madara smiled slightly, I engraved the whole plan in the tablets you will read more about it in detail when you read the tablets, for now I will tell you what the plan needed to be a success. He paused for a moment catching his breath, for the plan to succeed I had to collect all the bijus and seal them into the Gedo Mazo. The Gedo Mazo is a vessel. It can only be controlled by someone who has the Rinnegan. Obito created an organization called Akitsuki, I know their purpose is to collect all bijus once they know all their locations and strengths, the group is compromised of S-ranked criminals only, there are 10 of them. Grandfather you said someone with the Rinnegan could control the vessel in which the bijus are sealed into. Does this mean that Obito awakened the Rinnegan? 
Madara shook his head, no Obito can't awaken the Rinnegan despite having both Uchiha and Senju powers. His body is not perfect like yours. I did tell you that I had awakened the Rinnegan and transplanted it to someone else, correct? Naruto nodded, that was before I had taken in Obito. The name of the child I transplanted my Rinnegan is Nagato Uzumaki, Obito using my name and his knowledge of the Rinnegan managed to get Nagato to work with him. Nagato controls the vessel, and is the figurehead leader of the Akatsuki while Obito operates behind the scenes. When he is not operating behind the scene he uses the name Tobi, keeping the name of Madara a secret to those in the group who aren't aware of it. Naruto now understood that since he was a Jinchuriku it meant he was in danger of being captured too. His grandfather had thought of a plan to rule the world by capturing the Bijuus, he figured the Bijuus were needed for their power. From what his grandfather had told him the Bijuus had large amounts of chakra that no man could have. The QB was said to have almost an infinite chakra supply, being the strongest of the Bijuus. He did not know if his grandfather still wanted to rule the world or if he wanted him to rule the world once he becomes powerful enough to do so. He had no intentions of ruling the world. He did not know what he would say if his grandfather was to ask him to rule the world. Grandfather, isn't Toby afraid that you will tell the world that he is not Madara? He did leave you alive. No he has no such fears. He knows that I can't do anything. Look at me I'm old. I can't stop him if I wanted to. He would have been fearful if he knew about you, but he doesn't, for now that is. Naruto did not need to know that the fool left him alive just so he could watch him take over the world using his name. Naruto nodded, I guess Zetsu has everything to do with why you know everything he is planning. Yes, Zetsu is quite useful when it comes to gathering information. What is it that you want me to do grandfather? Do you still plan on ruling the world? Madara shook his head, I no longer have such plans, I don't care what happens to the world, I'm going to die soon. But what I plan for you is to take back everything that belongs to me. Naruto waited for his fate, with the secrets of your body you can become powerful, even powerful than I was at my prime. You will restore the Uchiha and take Kanoa back from the fools that rule it. If they don't make you Hokage you can do it by force, just make sure that you rule Kanoa. Naruto smiled slightly. At least his fate was not that bad as he had thought it would be. What about Tobi and the Rinnegan? Kill the fool and you can do whatever you want with the Rinnegan. Naruto nodded, is Tobi is he the one who ripped the QB out of mother the day I was born? Madara nodded, well I guess I have more reasons to want him dead. Madara smiled things were going according to plan. He was still surprised that Naruto did not argue with him over becoming the leader of Kanoa, a village he hates. Still what worried him was what would happen when time came for him to die. When he said he no longer cared for what happened to the world because he was going to die, he saw a flicker of emotion in Naruto's eyes. It seemed that Naruto had still not come to accept that he was going to die in a couple of years. Grandfather, this means I have to train harder than I have been. Madara nodded, yes it is why I had given you some time off because in a month you will no longer be going back to Kanoa until your clone graduates at the academy. Are you saying that I'm going to stop hiding after I graduate? No, when you graduate, it will be risky to let a clone be your place since you will be doing missions. You will still keep your secrets. I told you before that you will only reveal some of them after I die. He saw it again when he said, die, but said nothing. Naruto nodded, who was he to deny his grandfather's wishes? Naruto I want you to return to Kanoa, Zetsu will come and fetch you in a month to continue your training. Hi. Gigi, Madara smiled as Naruto went away to his room so he could teleport back to Kanoa. Zetsu appeared from behind him, that went well. Black Zetsu said in his deep voice. Yes he took everything in far better than I had expected. At least now he can train harder knowing what his goals are. You really are serious about this, aren't you? What I do now, I do for him. Once he awakens the Rinnegan he will become God. Other villagers will fight him in fear of his power but they will not defeat him, once that happens it will be easy for him to influence the elemental nations. Madara replied not directly answering Zetsu's question, but Zetsu understood. Madara no longer wanted to rule the world, he wanted his grandchild to live a better life and change the shinobi world with the power of God he would come to gain once he awakens the Rinnegan. A change in the shinobi world was what Madara wanted, that was why he wanted to rule it. Kanoa Naruto sat down at his kitchen. He had a lot on his mind. 
He now knew what he lived for, his dream that his grandfather had set for him. He would make his grandfather proud by achieving his goals. He had been lost living without a sound goal. He had only been living, training just so he could protect himself, so that he can survive. But now he had a goal, an ambition that he would make a reality and there was no one who would step in his way. Toby's plans still troubled him, but his grandfather's words that he could be stronger than him soothed his worries. But still he was worried, it did not make him feel good knowing that there was a group that was only focused on hunting people like Down. He was sure that no one in the village knew of the Akitsuki, his grandfather knew things that no one knew of. At the moment he just had to focus on getting strong so he could defend himself and defeat his enemies. His grandfather had assured him that Toby did not know about his relations with him. That was a positive he could surprise the Uchiha when he does find out about his relations with Madara. With his dreams he now had to accept that he was an Uchiha. The Uchiha clan was his clan. He was part of the clan. It was no longer his grandfather's, Atachi, or Sasuke's clan only, but it was also his clan. He was one of the few remaining Uchihas in the world. Thinking of it, Naruto smiled it meant that he was going to have to use Uchiha as his name. He would drop Uzumaki and use Uchiha only. He did not have to use that cursed Namikaze's name, which was a good thing for him. Uchiha Naruto, he thought with a smile. The villagers were going to surely, die, when they come to find out that he was an Uchiha. He could almost see the looks on their faces when they hear of it. Even when he hated his father, he would let the village know that Namikas was his father just to make them feel worse about themselves. He could almost see them begging for forgiveness, not that he would care about their apologies. He would just let them know of his heritage just to see that look on their faces, it would be priceless. Even his grandfather would laugh. Uchiha and Namikas were already taken off. What was left was Uzumaki. It was the only thing that he had left of his mother. She was never seen as a hero, no was her name written anywhere, she had been made non-existent. He would correct that, in time. Naruto was brought out of his thoughts when he heard a knock on the door. He figured it was the Sandime, he had been expecting the old man for his monthly visits. He went to open the door and led the old man back to the kitchen. The Sandime smiled softly while he took a sit, it's good to you again my boy. Naruto smiled and nodded, it's good to see you too, Gigi. I'm glad you are still lively as always, I brought you your allowance, he said giving Naruto an envelope, Naruto took it with a wide grin. How are things at the academy? Are your sensei still sabotaging your academics? Naruto shook his head, Aruka sensei no longer glares at me, and sometimes he even smiles at me. Naruto replied. He was surprised when the chunin stopped glaring at him and started being nice to him. He was no longer kicked out of the academy. Aruka would even go as far as to have him woken up should he be sleeping inside the class, just so that he could listen to the lecture. Although he had been able to see traces of hatred at the Chunin's eyes, he knew that the Chunin was trying to get over his hatred not hide it. The Sandime smiled brightly upon hearing Naruto's answer, Good, I expect you to get room result now that your sensei is being fair with you. Naruto grinned, he had expected the Sandime to say something like that, I will try my best Gigi. Sarutobi smiled getting up, I will hear from Aruka about your progress. I will be going now I have some paperwork to finish. Naruto nodded, goodbye Gigi, the Sandime walked away leaving Naruto alone. The Sandime spoke Aruka's sensei like he was familiar with it. He guessed the Sandime was responsible for the Chunin teacher's change of heart. The old man despite his lies never stopped trying to make his life better. Unknown location Naruto walked inside his grandfather's hideout with his Sharingan activated. A month had passed and he had returned to continue with his training. His grandfather was waiting for him beside Zetsu. Naruto stopped in front of them. Let's get going. Madara said walking away. Naruto followed behind with Zetsu. That will be it for this video if you want more comment down below, like, subscribe. And see you guys later.